Hey guys, and welcome to Florin. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Today we've got a really cool episode. We've got part one of a two-part series. And uh, what we're going to be doing is we're creating this uh, like Riddick movie poster. And we <laughs> we actually photographed me in the kind of like the pose of Riddick. And uh, there's a behind the scenes where you guys can see all the like how we use the lighting and things like that. Um, we photographed me and now we're going to be turning uh, basically straight out of camera all the way into a Riddick movie poster. We're gonna be doing all kinds of really cool stuff. Let's go ahead and get into it because we've got this part and then the next part where we're gonna be bringing it all together. So really, really cool. So this is, uh, this is straight out of camera here. This is me and I know like I look all scary and whatnot, but it's just the lighting. I, I promise I'm not actually, I don't actually look like this in real life. I look like this. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically make this into this movie poster. So oftentimes it's a really good idea. Let's just go ahead and hit Command T. We'll make that a little bit bigger. Um, it's a really good idea oftentimes to like have your reference right here in your document. So I usually just kind of have it up just to see, you know, what kind of like dodging and burning and things like that I want to do. And it's not going to be exactly the same. Obviously, I'm not Vin Diesel here and, you know, I, I'm not bald and all that stuff. And I don't, we, we did rent some goggles, um, but they just, they were giant. And uh, hold on. We did wind up renting these goggles for the photo shoot that I was going to wear or something like that. But they wound up being just way too big. So we just didn't even use them. But um, other than that, it's going to look very similar. So here's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and start off with our coloring. Uh, you will see in the Riddick, it's kind of like monochromatic and it's like pretty much one color. So to do that, it's really not that hard. What we're going to do is grab an adjustment layer and I'm going to go up to hue saturation and we're going to click on this colorize button. There we go. And we're just going to change our saturation a little bit lower and I want to click here in like kind of the blue green area. All right, that looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and bring our lightness down just a little bit as well with that. Now with this stuff, I usually don't like to keep this on 100% opacity. So I'm just gonna like lower it a little bit just so we can see like a, a little bit of, you know, the original information that was there first. Um, okay, the next thing we can see, so getting our colors a little bit better. Next thing we can see is half of, uh, you know, Riddick's face here is like totally, totally dark. So what I'm gonna do, let's just go ahead and create a curves adjustment layer. Click here and just drag down in this way. There we go. Now I'm going to hit Command I, and that's going to invert my layer mask. And with a like a large soft white brush, I'm just going to start painting in white right over here. But I actually want this to be underneath this hue saturation layer because the hue saturation adjustment layer that colorizes the image, um, it it will often really help out if you don't have like if you want your color to be above these curves adjustment layers. If if it's the other way around, sometimes the curves adjustment layers will further uh, enhance or like change your colors. And it can be sometimes just uh, give you a result you don't really want. All right, so I'm just painting with like a soft brush at this point. You know, just like really not, not something that I hope to define the entire image by, but just something like, you know, let's just get this area looking a little bit darker. That's basically the whole goal here. Okay, so that looks good. Just like a, a general, let's just make that side of the image a bit darker. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do, we need to start like locating in some shadows and some highlights and kind of like figuring out how those are going to actually play with each other. So I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to grab another curves adjustment layer. Okay. And we're going to click here in the middle and drag that down quite a bit. Now I'm going to start painting this again visible on these shadow areas. But this time what we're going to do is I'm kind of trying to keep it just these shadow areas. And what we're also going to do, there we go, is I'm going to use blend if to make sure that this does not show up where the underlying layer is uh, lighter. So I just want this to be darker. So this is almost going to be like a dodge and burn. It'll look a lot more natural in a second. I realize it looks totally weird right now. So turning that off and on looks weird, but we're going to double click right over here, which brings up our blend layer style that has blend diff right here on the bottom. And I'm going to hold alt or option and go from the right to the left because I don't want this to be visible where the underlying layer is lighter. Uh, because it's a shadow and I want it to look like a more natural shadow. There we go. So you can see if I click the preview before and after, like the <laughs> after, with the preview selected, you can see it blends in really naturally. Without it, it just kind of looks like I painted it in Photoshop. So that's a really big step and it's going to help out uh, quite a bit there. Okay, next thing we're going to do, let's just take it and do the opposite. I'm going to grab a curves adjustment layer. We're going to click here and drag it way, way up there. And now I'm going to have this be visible you know, in some of these areas, but now I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to say I only want this to be visible, you know, where the underlying layer is lighter. So it's only going to show up in the lighter areas and it's going to enhance those. So let's just double click here, 
And then this time, instead of going from the right to the left, we're going to go from the left to the right. So hold Alt or Option and go from the left to the right. There we go. And you can change your opacity in here as well and see what that does. All right. Very nice. So we can see we're getting a little bit more of like a, uh, you know, kind of dark defined look. I'm going to go even further with that. We're going to grab another curve adjustment layer and I'm going to create like little bits of highlight in places. I'll show you how to do that. So it's basically just you go in here to your blend if and then you want to just choose a different set of settings. So we're going to bring this left side in just a little bit there. There we go. And this is where I just want like just the little bits of highlight. There we go. So this is just creating like just that little bit right there. So the first one, that's what it looked like beforehand. And then we went ahead and put some highlight on and then just those little bits. And it's just, it really helps kind of get the skin looking like it's, you know, kind of specular and it, it helps the skin give it a little bit of life. So I'm going to shift click all those and hit command G. So we can see already we've gone from that to that, which is pretty good. Um, you know, this is not already not too far from the Riddick. Let's see about colors and things like that. Maybe we can just adjust our saturation. We can go in here and um, maybe I'll just bring my saturation up just a little bit. And you can see this layer is above everything else. So it kind of just, you know, all these layers, if, even if they did affect color, this hue saturation layer, because it's above all the other ones, is going to kind of cancel out any color, color shifts that they did. Now, I, the Riddick poster, the original has less color than the one that I am actually want to make. I, I would just like a little bit more color, especially a little bit more skin tone in mind, but um, it's, it's totally up to you as far as whatever you guys want to do. And um, I'm going to leave, leave a little bit more um, like detail and things like that as well. Let's just go ahead and um, I'm going to see, I'm going to darken it down just a little bit more. There we go. So as I do this, I'm kind of bringing up the original and doing like a compare and contrast. Now I know we're making a movie poster in this case, um, but you would use the same strategy. Let's say you found uh, an image on online and you really like the way the person edited that image. Uh, just use the same kind of thing. Just keep it up in here. I mean, don't use their image, but you can use it as a reference. There's nothing at all wrong with that. So um, that's basically exactly what we're doing here is just like keeping it open as a reference, being like, oh, hey, I like this. Let's see if I can do, you know, something relatively similar. Okay, there we go. And we've got our, uh, our Riddick, that looks really good. So we're going to create, um, let's go ahead and create this like glow that you can see up here in the top left. Um, we're going to wait until part two to do the eyes because they actually are going to require uh, quite a bit of time. But we're going to go ahead and create this glow. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new layer. I'm going to hit G for my gradient tool. Now, the color here, I'm just going to, you can choose any color. You can go ahead and choose it like from your image itself. For, so G for the gradient tool. Then we're going to click on our gradient editor. And I want to make sure I'm clicking on the second one in, which is the foreground to transparent gradient. And I'm going to click right up here at the top onto a radial gradient. So now we have um, this blue color to transparent, and it's going to show up in a radial pattern. So when I click and kind of drag out like that, that's what we get. All right, pretty cool. Let's go ahead and make that a little bit bigger. There we go. And if you don't want it to darken, you can see it's kind of like darkening some of these highlights. We can just change this from normal down to lighten. And then there we go. It looks just like a little bit cooler. Um, I'm just going to do another big one, maybe right over here, just because I, I just feel like it. I just want to do this. And there's no one around here to stop me because I just, whatever, I do what I want. <laughs> All right, there we go. I kind of like that in there too. Maybe lower the opacity a little bit. Let's change that to lighten as well and kind of bring the opacity down a little bit there. Okay, this is interpreted uh, Riddick. I'm, I'm not going to make it exactly the same. That's not fun for me or you. So <laughs> we're just going to do, we're going to do this. Okay, that looks really good. So now we have those glows in there and um, I think everything's starting to come together well. It could, it probably could still get a little bit darker and um, maybe a little bit less saturated. There we go, a little bit darker, and then we'll go up here and I'll create another hue saturation. You can go back to your original one if you wanted, but I'm just going to create another one just, just for really the heck of it. I just feel like it, so um, there we go. That looks a little bit better there. So we've got a couple different groups. We can see already um, pretty big difference. So here's where we started. That's some of the color, or some of the, the color as well as the shadows and highlight, a little bit more, and then adding that kind of blue in there. And um, we're actually really close. So that's pretty much the end of part one. 
um, where we shape everything. Next part, we're going to be taking care of the eyes. We're going to be doing some of this text work on the bottom, then kind of bringing it together as a whole. So you guys can see, you know, creating this type of look really isn't that hard. It's just like you got to know what to do, and then you know, starting off with a photograph that actually looks. Um, it was photographed in the right way. If this was just like me, as you see me right now, and I was trying to do all this stuff, would not happen. It just wouldn't happen. So make sure like the lighting and where you put all these lights and things like that around you. I mean, you can use like desk lamps and stuff like that. It doesn't have to be fancy or expensive. But if you want this type of look, you want the light to kind of scrape across your face. So um, just keep that in mind when you're actually trying to do something like this. And that's it. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching part two. I'll join you in part two. This is part one. I will do it. In the future is part two. For more information on this episode, go to flern.com. While you're there, be sure to check out our pro tutorials. These are the most in-depth Photoshop tutorials available on the internet. If you want one for free, just sign up for our newsletter following the link right down below and it'll be delivered to you instantly. We also feature exclusive interviews, written contents, inspiration from people like you as well as professional photographers and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.